What's up everybody, it's Drew Wilkins with Swine and Bovine Barbecue, and in this video, we're making some super simple all pork garlic sausage. Let's get going. We have ourselves a nice, just under nine pound pork butt. This sausage is gonna be 100% pork, and this is a bone-in pork butt. So, I had previous plans for it, ended up freezing it because it didn't get used. So using up one I've got in the freezer here, you can definitely get a boneless one, should you prefer to not have to do the knife work to get this off the bone to make sausage. But what we're gonna do, just gonna follow along the blade bone right here and just butcher this thing up. I am not an expert in butchery, so we're just gonna get this out the best we can. So after a little bit of knife work, we got this blade bone out. Used to throw these away in the past, but I've got a little bit of a hankering to try and make some brisket or barbecue style ramen in the future. So I'm gonna save onto this to eventually make a pork stock out of it. Toss it if you don't want it. Now we're just gonna cube everything up. Whatever size grinder you have, that's how big you should make the chunks or cubes of meat going through it. I've got a one horsepower grinder so it can take some pretty big chunks, so I go big. If you're using a KitchenAid or a smaller, maybe quarter or half horsepower grinder, just go a little smaller, whatever your chute and grinder allows for. Now that our meat is nicely cubed up, we're gonna go in with 46 grams of kosher salt. We're also gonna go on with six grams of pink curing salt. This will allow us to cold smoke the sausage without getting any bacteria growth. So now we're gonna mix this up until you can't see these salt granules anymore. The meat is nice and evenly coated. Our meat is nicely and evenly coated in our kosher salt and our pink curing salt. So we're gonna cover this up, put it in the fridge overnight, let the salt and the cure, most importantly, do its job. We'll be back tomorrow, to finish out the spices, case it up. It's the following morning. Our meat mixture is in the freezer. That way it's nice, cold, almost frozen, but not quite frozen. Before we put it through the grinder, we've also got our grinder parts in as well to make sure that they're nice and cold. And that meat stays nice and cold when it goes through the grinder. So while those are in the freezer, we've got a lot of garlic to chop. So let's get chopping. Got our garlic nicely minced up, so it's time to grind our meat. As mentioned, this has been in the freezer for right around an hour. So it's nice, super cold. It'll avoid fat getting smeared and greasy when we send it through the grinder. Also going through the coarse dye on the grinder today as well. Let's get this sent through the grinder. And I did save one clove of garlic to put in with the meat. We can see how it comes out through the grinder. Maybe we could have saved ourselves a lot of mincing, but we're gonna find out. All right, let's see how this clove of garlic comes out. Just dropped it in. See a little of it there, so it gets it pretty small, not quite mince size. So I think I'll continue to mince it, but that's a solid option if you don't wanna go through and mince every single clove of garlic. And there's another example of it as well. That's a little bigger for my liking. So glad we went through and minced it, didn't try and put them through the grinder because we want it to be a little smaller for this sausage. Meat's nicely ground up and we're keeping it simple with the seasonings. This is just coarse black pepper, and then our garlic, and that's it. Salt, pepper, garlic. Now, we're just gonna get this all mixed up until it's nice, really, really tacky. We've got a good bind on our sausage. Before we get too tacky though, we wanna add our dry non-fat milk powder. This will be a binder, help the sausage bind together, retain moisture, be nice, juicy snappy links. And then along with that, we want to add some liquid, 10% by weight liquid. And that was a Pilsner from Manhattan Project, local brewery here in Dallas. Feel free to use water, whatever beer you like. We're going with that today. After about, I don't know, maybe four minutes of mixing, our sausage is nice and tacky. You can pick it up. It wants to stay together. Doesn't fall off the hand easy. That's the type of bind that we're looking for. I'm gonna pack our meat into the stuffer. You really wanna jam it down in there, avoid air pockets. Got some 28 to 32 millimeter casings here. They've been soaking in a mixture of two cups of cold water along with half a teaspoon of baking soda. Little tip I picked up from a commenter on one of my videos where they had learned it through two guys in a cooler and Eric over there. So solid tip, I found that my casings are much more durable when doing it. Uh, but we're going to get these, slide them on, just fill up a little water, put them right on the horn. We'll 
get a little meat to start coming out. Tie off the end and start casing. And I like to go with one long big rope and then case individually. So I'm just putting some light pressure on the horn here. We don't want to stuff them like we would if we were doing individual links because then by the time we would link them, it would be too tight and we'd pop the casing. So we don't want them to be super loose because we want to avoid getting air pockets into our links as we stuff, but we don't want them to be so tight that we break the casings when it comes time to link these. So I'm just gonna get this into the casing. Had a blowout. Got a little tight on the casing on the horn. It's a little twisted right there. Too much pressure, blew it out. It happens, sucks. I hate it when it happens, but just part of making sausage. So I'm gonna get this snipped off. We'll put this meat back in here and finish it up. And we've probably only had another link or two left in there. So almost made it without busting one. Sausage making, it happens. Now it's time to link up these sausages. So we've got the shorter casing that we had from the remainder after we busted our link first. Just find a spot on the tray, however long you want the links to be. Six, seven inches is typically where I like to go. So we'll make a pinch here for the first link. Come down, kind of find that same area. Make another pinch and then twist. There we go, we've got two links done. So again, we'll come over here, find where we wanna start, pinch, pinch, and then twist. And I just twist until they feel nice and tight. We don't want them to bust, so don't twist too much. And for this one, it's a little shorter, so we're gonna make some smaller links. And just twist. And this is the end, I always leave the end untied. That way it gives the sausage room to move if we did overpack it. Now just tie that off. There we go. Now we'll link up this last rope. Be ready to go. The last thing that we want to do since we case these in one long rope instead of individual links is really check for air pockets. A little harder to control that when going with one long rope than linking versus linking individually. So if you see any air pockets, this is literally just called a sausage pricker. You can pick them up on Amazon. It's got a link in the description of this video for one if you need one. But just go through. I'm not seeing a ton, but I know there probably is some in here. So just pricking along in certain areas. Also, after we've let the links air dry a little bit and the casings dry out, it's a little easier to see. If you don't get them now, you can get them then. But for now, we're just gonna go through and prick our sausages. Now, typically these would be going into a fridge overnight to dry out the casings. However, I wanna smoke these today. So we're gonna put these in front of a fan. You can use a box fan, whatever fan you want to help speed up that drying process. Probably do that for 30, 45 minutes, an hour, however long it takes till they're looking nice and dry. Then we'll get them on the pit. Our casings have dried out nicely, so let's get our links on the pit. Lighting's a little difficult here, but we've got our links on the pit. We're gonna let them go for the next several hours until they get nice color on the top side. Then we'll flip them, but we're gonna keep the temps ideally in between a 125 and 150 range. For now, shutting it down, letting them cook. We are two and a half hours into cold smoke on our sausage, and it's starting to take on some great color. We are gonna cut these into individual links, flip them over. So now we're gonna shut it back down, let them keep smoking until we've got the color that we want. It was tough to see because of the way the sun was shining in on the pit, but this is the color that we have on the sausages right now. Looking great, so flipping them over. The other side will take on a lot of color. Bottom side will still get color too. We'll pull it once we're satisfied. Four and a half hours later and our sausage is done. It's looking absolutely fantastic. We brought it up to 155, 160 to finish fully cooking it, but now we're gonna take it off Put it in an ice bath. The ice bath will help stop the cooking process because again, we did bring it up to 155, so we built the fire up. It'd continue to carry over and cook if we didn't do this. And it'll also help that casing shrink and really bind and attach to the meat. Give us a snappy casing. We're gonna get the rest off into this ice bath, let them stop cooking, vac seal the majority of them, but a few of them we're gonna reheat and eat. 30 minutes on the pit and our sausage is done. It's looking real nice, feeling firm, nice and Pretty bouncy. <laughs> so let's see how it passes the snap test. Yep, that is a solid snap. You've got some garlic studs in there. That's looking pretty solid. Let's go ahead and slice into it, see how the bind looks. 
Yeah, really good bind on this. Held together nicely. Again, more garlic in there. Put a lot in there, 3% by weight, but looks really, really good. So let's slice some of this up and eat. The time has come. Pretty simple sausage cook, all things considered. A pork butt, some salt, some pink curing salt, black pepper, garlic, and of course some beer to go along with some non-fat dried milk powder with a binder, some smoke, and we've got ourselves what looks like and smells like a fantastic sausage. Let's give it a try. Cheers. Really, really good. Nice, good, clean flavor. Definitely tastes the garlic. So if garlic's not your thing, first, why well, even watching this video? But second, you can definitely taste it, but it's not overpowering. It's not bitter and raw. It has a nice, not roasted garlic flavor. You can still tell that it was fresh garlic used in here as opposed to garlic powder though, but just a garlic flavor. Again, not bitter, maybe a little spice from the garlic because obviously there's just black pepper in there, but in the back of my tongue, I get a little bit of that garlic spice when you use fresh garlic. Let's give it another bite. Yeah, this is really, really good. This certainly is a sausage that's greater than the sum of its parts. Very simple seasoning that we just went through, but man, it tastes fantastic. Let's give it the old bite test, see how loud of a crunch we get. Nothing to say other than that's one fantastic sausage. Garlic's not overpowering, but you can definitely taste it and it's there, which is exactly what we want. And smoky, delicious, really no arguments. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any ideas on what you wanna see me cook next, please leave it in the comments down below. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.